after defining curves in R3 in a mathematically precise way and discussing some of its properties, now we are interested in some of the geometrical properties of curves. So for example, we are interested in the speed of a curve and we are interested in the arc length of this curve alpha. Now we know that any given function alpha from i to r3 with some certain conditions, so it represents a geometrical path or trajectory of a moving object in r3. Now if it is trajectory of a moving object in r3, then we can talk about what is the speed of that object. And similarly, we can talk about what is the distance traveled by that object from for example, time t is equal to 10 to time t is equal to 20. So things like this are uh, discussed in this module. Now consider uh, this uh, function alpha of t given in a very uh, particular way. So in, so in this example, we considered alpha to be 2t first component, t square second component, t cube by 3 is the third component. Now as we have discussed that this alpha represents trajectory of a moving object in R3. And then the question is if at any particular time t I am interested in finding the speed of that object then how we can do that. And similarly if, if I want to find out the distance traveled by this object uh, whose trajectory is represented by this function alpha of t. So if I want to calculate for example the distance traveled this arc length then how we can calculate this thing. So these are the two important geometrical properties. So what is the speed of alpha at any time t and what is the distance traveled by alpha of t from time t is equal to minus 1 to 1 for example. So how we can do that? So let's begin with our first aim which is finding the speed of a curve for any particular time t or for any particular value of the parameter t. Now so far we have discussed one important thing related to curve which is the velocity vector and so given any curve we can calculate the velocity vector at any point t. So it is a vector with point of application alpha of t and vector part can be calculated by differentiating the three different components of alpha of t. And from physics we know that uh, the magnitude or the length of this velocity vector is going to give us the speed and we know the velocity vector how do we calculate it and so we can calculate uh, the norm or the magnitude or the length of this velocity vector in this very simple way so this is the square of the first component square of the second component square of the third component of the velocity vector and taking the square root which gives me the length of this velocity vector and hence it is going to give me the speed of that object represented by this alpha. Now in particular if we have uh, uh, the same function and we want to apply this definition so if we have this alpha and uh, in order to calculate the speed I need to calculate this alpha prime of t norm okay. So what is alpha prime of t because we need alpha prime of t so this is going to be equal to 2, 2t, two 3t square by 3 and hence it is equal to 2, 2t and t square. And if, uh, if I want to calculate uh, the speed at any time instant t, then I want to calculate its magnitude. So the magnitude is going to be equal to 2 square plus 2t square plus t square square, which is going to be equal to 4 plus 4t square plus t raised to the power 4. Now this can be simplified as 2 plus t square square and this is going to be equal to 2 plus t square. Now this function 2 plus t square is a function of t and hence it tells us the speed of this object represented by this function alpha of t varies when the time or this parameter t varies. So it is a function of t. So for example at time t is equal to 0 what will be the speed okay. So at t is equal to 0 we can calculate the speed by putting t is equal to 0 and this is going to be equal to 2 and when t is equal to 1 it is going to be equal to 3 and similarly as t changes the speed of the object is changing but it can be calculated and in this particular case it is 2 plus t square. Now the next important property about uh, a given curve in R3 is the length from one instant of a parameter to another value of the parameter. So in other words we are interested in the distance traveled by this object represented by alpha from any time instant to another time instant. So in particular we want to find out the arc length 
of this curve alpha now consider this uh, curve alpha and for simplicity we are imposing the condition that it is contained in the plane and hence the z coordinate is zero now in this particular case what we need to find out so for example we want to find out uh, the length of this trajectory from t is equal to a to let's say this t is equal to b so that's what we want to find out of course it is not a simple problem now because uh, we can find uh, the length of uh, for example straight lines in a very simple way but finding the length uh, in this case is a non-trivial task so uh, the strategy is going to be very simple so we divide uh, this curve in very tiny tiny bits now uh, the point is uh, these intervals are not appearing to be very tiny but if I uh, draw them uh, very small intervals then it is impossible to see so uh, let's assume that it is a very very tiny interval okay and the whole curve is divided into these tiny parts okay now what do we want to use we want to use uh, we want to add uh, the length of all of these tiny parts uh, so for that we need to first find out the length of one tiny bit and then we add them in some uh, mathematically precise way okay so let's say we have this uh, length so how do we calculate this length so calculation of this length is relatively simple because uh, this uh, change in the, the trajectory of alpha of t is basically due to change in x and change in y so how do we calculate change in x so change in x is basically dx so dx can be calculated in a very simple way because x is given as x of t so x is equal to x of t so dx is going to be equal to x prime of t dt now let's talk about how to calculate the change in y so this is dy now once again y is equal to y of t it's a function of t so this implies dy is going to be equal to y prime of t dt now now given these values of dx and dy we want to calculate what is going to be the length of this and since it is a right angle triangle we can use the Pythagoras uh, theorem to find out this length okay so this length let's say this length is for example alpha or let's choose some other symbol for example let's say this is uh, uh, a so this a is basically equal to this uh, uh, Pythagoras theorem says that this is equal to square of uh, this base plus the square of perpendicular and then uh, we can take the square root okay so this is going to be equal to uh, dx square plus dy square and using these values of dx and dy so this is going to be equal to x prime t square dt square plus y prime t square and d t square so this is going to be equal to so we can take out this uh, d t square common and uh, it will become something like this so x prime t square plus y prime t square and d t so this is the length of uh, this tiny bit and this is let's say a now if we, if i want to calculate uh, the whole length so what do we do so we of course uh, change uh, the t and take t to be a parameter and we say that we are adding them so we are adding all of these tiny lengths so what do we do we use this concept of integration so we integrate this thing so x prime square so i'm ignoring this variable t just to simplify the notation x prime square y prime square dt and t varies from t is equal to a to b so t is equal to a to b is going to be the length of this uh, curve from t is equal to a to t is equal to b now uh, let's uh, discuss this formula in in some other point of view so we have discussed that the length is going to be equal to x prime t square plus y prime t square dt and a to b now let's let's have a look at this uh, formula from another point of view now the point is this is going to be equal to now this expression this expression is basically uh, the speed of the curve so basically we can just say that it is equal to alpha prime of t dt so this alpha prime is uh, alpha prime of t is basically the velocity vector so at any point this alpha prime of t is velocity vector and this becomes the speed so we can just say that at this uh, interval at this instant of time we can calculate the distance traveled so this is basically the distance traveled 
in time in a very infinitesimal interval of time which is time dt and what will be the distance traveled so speed multiplied by the time so this little interval is going to be the distance traveled by this object and of course along this curve and uh, at the end what do we do so we add all of these distance traveled by this object and uh, from t is equal to a to t is equal to b and this is going to give me the exact arc length from t is equal to a to t is equal to b now let's see uh, what we have uh, uh, achieved so far so the arc length from t is equal to a to t is equal to b can be calculated in the following way a to b norm of uh, uh, the velocity vector which is the speed dt or v of t which is denoted as the speed now uh, let's come back to the same example we have uh, the same function alpha of t and now we want to calculate the arc length for t is equal to minus 1 to t is equal to 1 now what we have uh, calculated so far so we have calculated that uh, alpha prime of t norm is equal to 2 plus t square and uh, in this case we want to calculate the arc length from minus 1 to 1 because t varies from minus 1 to 1 so this is going to be equal to norm of alpha prime of t dt which is going to be equal to minus 1 to 1 2 plus t square dt and when we integrate this we get 2t plus t cube by 3 and the limits are from minus 1 to 1 and at the end we can simplify 1 minus minus 1 plus 1 by 3 1 minus uh, minus 1 because uh, this is uh, uh, the odd power of 1 so this is 2 so it becomes 4 and this is once again 2 so it is uh, basically 2 by 3 uh, sorry, 2 by 3 and hence it is going to be equal to 14 by 3 so this is the arc length of uh, this uh, function of this uh, curve represented by alpha from t is equal to minus 1 to t is equal to 1 now if we have uh, a curve alpha defined in some interval i and uh, a b is some particular uh, value so for example from this point a to this point b so from this value of the parameter to this value of the parameter let's say it is the restriction of this curve alpha and so it is the segment of this curve known as the curve segment then if sigma is uh, a curve segment of alpha okay so we are restricting so L, uh, sigma is basically just re the restriction of alpha to this closed interval a b so that's another way of looking at this so this alpha function is restricted to this uh, closed interval then the length of the sigma is denoted by L of sigma so that's just a simple notation that we will be using in our further discussion now in this module we have discussed how do we calculate the speed of any given function alpha from i to r3 which basically represents the trajectory of a moving object and we have also seen that how do we calculate the arc length of any given function alpha from parameter value t is equal to a to t is equal to b